folks, Eric Woldridge here with the Additive Guru channel. And today I want to take a quick little uh, moment to talk about some of the science of FDM production and some of the common terminology. Specifically, we're going to talk about the shells associated with 3D printing. So shells can also be associated with the internal wall thickness. If we look at this little test cube that I have, it has the design of it is has a certain design of wall thickness. However, what goes on the inside could be totally different from what we see on the outside. And what goes on the inside has a significant difference in the overall part performance. And shells control a lot of that. One of the things to keep in mind in terms of object performance and object strength is that it's all about the extreme skins. For example, when we're bending something, we're pulling on something, it often has a lot of failure associated with uh, the structure right in these zones, not so much the middle zones. This is, can be seen in a lot of our building construction stuff. For example, we don't build a lot of beams just out of solids when we can be, build them out of shaped steel like this. So for example, we don't do a solid steel block to make a beam we make a beam that looks like an I-beam or a W-beam where the concentration of material is on the extreme points and there's not a lot of useful or there's not a lot of actual wasted material put in here. So shells matter to our production. So I'm going to zoom in real quickly and we're going to just do a test run to, I'm using Cure for the example in a, a good old fashioned test cube and I actually have this cube set to one shell. And what it is, is if you look closely in it building up, you can see right here that there's one wall and there's another wall. Get it moving even closer. So there is a wall here and there's a wall here. And notice the rest of it is infill in between. Okay? Now, watch what happens when I go into my settings. And I can change this by going into Incura to my little edit button right here. And I can choose the custom option down at the bottom and then I can choose to expand or contract all of these different features. The one I'm going to change is the shell. Now there's a lot of options here. We can actually just set it to three and notice the it has a little pop-up but notice when I do this we have a you will have a change in wall thickness and other kinds of things. Um, three is the quickest example to show this. So I hit three and hit slice. And it slices and we're back in preview mode and look you see that there is one, two, three, four, five walls from one side to the other. So now this entire wall is one solid wall, not an edge and some info in between. Watch what happens when I change it to two. Now we have five still. Well, you may say, well, that doesn't make any sense. How'd you get that? Well, it's because of the fact that this thing's actually built, filling in from one side or the other. And sometimes there's not enough space to turn around and actually do a infill, so it just adds another wall. I switch it back to one. And so it's providing a wall again here and here. And that's one thing you have to understand in terms of shelves they work from wherever there's an open space. So for example, on the outside, it is going, well, right here, it's going one shell in. And this was open in the design, so there's one shell. We change it to two shells, and then it has to add in one shell, the other shell, one shell, the other shell, and again there's not enough space for an infill to even matter so it's actually adding in a third shell there. Let me give you a different part so you can see it a little bit more clearly. There we go. Now I've brought in a solid cube in terms of design. And so the SDL itself looks like the outside solid, as you can kind of see there. Um, we run the slice with two shells or two wall counts. Now we switch to preview and you see what happens. All of this is infill. Here's your two walls. So that's interesting. Let's change it to six. And now we see that it has six shells. 
So what am I doing? By increasing these shells, I'm basically increasing, let me switch it to 10, I'm increasing the internal wall thickness of the design. Basically, the distance between solid wall structure and when infill starts to kick in. Now you may say, well, why don't we just do it as a solid? Well, that sort of wastes material in terms of object performance. Again, going back to that example of an I-beam, they're shaped this way because we don't really get a lot of benefit out of this zone or this zone in terms of a beam's performance. It's more about the extreme perimeters of an object in terms of performance than it is in the middle. Now, in terms of compression, if you're just pushing down on something, yeah, the more material you have, the better it is. But a lot of times our parts aren't just, you know, purely in compression. So I say all that to make you aware of how you can go in and actually modify your settings within your individual slicer and get an optimized strength. You may turn around and produce a lot of shells here. Typically we range from four to six shells depending on our situation. If it starts failing beyond that then we need to do a redesign in terms of our, our overall shape. And the infill pattern can be addressed and you know we have another video for that. But for right now you want to play around with these shells to optimize your internal strength. Now, just so you know, how wide is it from here to here? Well, that depends on the number of shells and also the size of your nozzle. So this is your FDM system nozzle and it's got an opening which most of them do average out at 0 0.04. Then your shell wall thickness is four shells times 0.4 it's a very bad point four. Point four equals 1.6. So my wall thickness would be roughly the nozzle size times the number of shells. Now this is not exact because uh, there's a little bit of squish factor sometimes that occurs, but this gets you pretty close to the, ball, the ballpark. Now you may also notice that there is the bottom and uh, you know bottom top thickness. And that is also essentially the number of shells that it puts on the bottom of the part and eventually the top of the part. We can see that real quickly. I'll preview it back down. And it's, it's hard to actually tell, but it's actually increasing the number of times that it goes from one layer to the next. So we can change that real quickly. Again, you'll notice they are factors of 0.4 because that's the size of the nozzle for this particular printer. But I may actually step mine up to 1.6. Actually, I'm sorry, that's not the nozzle, it's the layer height. So we're at points uh, 2, 1.5, that kind of thing. And we generally like the equivalent of, um, you know, what we would consider four shells, even though it's not exactly the same. So the top and bottom thickness would be set to 1.6, maybe 2.4, just depends on what you're after. And that way you have a top and wall up here at the top of the cube, at the bottom of the cube, a thickness wall of 2.4. Again, this, will change, this won't change, but your layer height would affect that, so they're just using an override right here. All right, so even it points out that, hey, you're essentially getting 12 top layers out of that because it may be set to 0.15 or 0.2, and you gotta be aware of that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, what really matters in terms of your settings, because a lot of softwares are different, or a lot of slicing softwares are different, is how many wall shells and how thick is your top layer how thick is your bottom layer or your, of your structure. You can also think of it like this. If we were to cut the block open while it's still sitting on the print bed, here's our side walls, here's our bottoms, and here's the top. How thick is this? How thick is this? And how thick is this? In our scenario, ours would be the four times 0 0.4, which is 1.6. And here at the top, it's going to be 2.4, and at the bottom, it's going to be 2.4. The rest of it would be infill. So that is one of the ways that you can go in and make changes to your different software. Again, we're using Cure on this to demonstrate it, but there is a lot of science and uh, performance that's going to be based on how thick that is, how thick that is, and how thick that is. Now, keep in mind, the more solid the, these walls are, the longer it's going to take to print. So that may be a trade-off for you based on your performance. And if you're making a, an object that is, you know, just 
aesthetically pleasing, maybe it's a vase or something, then you don't need to set it to a four wall count. You might get by with just two or three. And that way you have at least enough strength uh, to handle it being knocked over or something, but nothing really, really pressing. Also, if you set it to one, then you might get more of a transparency effect, which is often desired in certain applications. So that's the kind of thing you have to play with. Anyway, that's the concept of uh, shell counts or wall thicknesses. And uh, what we recommend is go get a, a cube of some type, calibration cube that's provided in some of the files or just on Thingiverse, wherever, and play around with these features. Again, you go in Cura, you go down to Custom, and expand the shell wall. And I'd like you to play with changing the wall count and checking out the preview. So just essentially do what I've done so that you can get a feel for it. Hit the slice, switch to preview mode so that you can see it, and experiment with that. All right, so that's it for that one. We'll see you next time.